If you've landed on this video, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I am a user experience designer and front end developer. And today we are going to be designing my brother's law portfolio. And if you're interested in the whole process, stay tuned for another video where I code this from start to finish from scratch. So I just wanted to give a little bit of background in case you ever work with law clients in the future. And of course, this is my brother, so it's a little bit more lenient, but there are some things to know about working with law professionals that can really help you in your designs. In general, lawyers are pretty no frills when it comes to having an online presence. Since needing legal counsel is a public need, sometimes they can be very anti-marketing, but they place a huge value on website security and client privacy. So hopping back to the design now, I've opted for a cool color palette, something that's still professional but that also shows personality. And my brother is very passionate about environmental law, so I wanted to incorporate this element of the wood grain to drive home that message. I chose the color turquoise because Michael has loved the color turquoise since he was a kid, so I figured that that would be a really good place to start. But I knew I needed some other colors that would contrast the initial palette and that would really make some of the accents on the page pop. So a tool that I really love using for fonts is the Adobe Font Library because you can type in your text, see what it's going to look like at a glance, and you know that you can use these fonts safely for web. Now, not everybody uses Adobe products because of course they are expensive, but a really great alternative is the Google Fonts Library. So for the main heading font, I ended up using a font called Fenwick, which I thought still looked really professional, but had just enough character to make it interesting. And then also for this heading font, I decided to use our dark blue color for this. I love charcoal and it's very classic and everyone uses it, but sometimes I feel like it's just a little bit overdone and that it could be a little bit more happening. <laughs> now I'm adding in and editing this photo that he supplied me. I think it's really important um, to build your page around the content that you have because if your photos and your imagery don't match the feeling of the website, then it creates a really disjointed experience. And often, especially working with individual people or small businesses, getting the content is the hardest part of the process. So something that you'll see me doing here that I do throughout the entire page is I use something called the rule of eight, which means that everything is spaced according to a multiple of eight. So needless to say, I have gotten very good at my eights times tables. And for this phone button up in the top right, it's always a best practice to, instead of say, call me now, have the actual phone number so that people on desktop can call using their phones and that it also doesn't interfere with people on mobile.
moving on to the middle section, I decided to make this a highlight of his areas of practice. And I'm making sure here that all of the boxes are exactly the same size and spaced evenly across the board. And I actually had to change this from areas of expertise to areas of practice because technically in law you can't claim you're an expert at something or there's some weird legal tape around that. <laughs> So just because I didn't want this to be super text heavy, I am adding in a few icons right here, but they're not going to be super detailed. This can get a little bit tricky when working with law clients because there's not really a sexy icon or a sexy photo that you can put in for things like criminal law or divorce law. So just you might have to get creative with that. <laughs> This is the most important part of the page, the form, because we have to assume that when somebody lands on this page that they want to do something. So we need to make it really easy for them to do that thing. And here we want them to request a free consultation. So in general, people follow the path of least resistance, and especially in a case like this where you're sharing personal information or maybe it's a little bit traumatizing, we want to make this as easy as possible and ask for as little information as possible. Because the more personal information you ask on something like this, the more wary that person is going to be, especially sending their information online. And you'll see me here typing out the name Princess Consuela Banana Hammock because I always like to design for extremes. Sometimes I'll see it, um, especially on Dribbble, when people will put like a username and it'll be like John Smith or something like that. And you can tell that if you had more than three syllables to your name that it wouldn't fit on there. And in the real world, you just need to be able to think about those things and prepare for them.
And as we're nearing the end of this video, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this. And if you made it to the end, you're amazing. <laughs> and if you want to see me build this, stay tuned for the next video. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or requests, be sure to leave them in the comment section below.